Oh gosh. No, no. <laughs> oh, my dogs have. Oh, now the neighbor's dog's going off. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, all of you, you've all got amazing timing. <gasps> oh, we're recording. Uh, I... <laughs> <laughs> it's okay, that, that part can be cut. We can literally start it when it starts. So, so I okay. start then. Uh, and you you just intro yourself and yeah. hey guys that. it's hodgepodge here uh today we're going to be doing something a bit different we're going to actually be doing a fan commentary of the 2001 bbc adaptation of the lost world by sir arthur conan doyle and i am joined by hello i'm the art minister from australia hello i'm alec from england uh, do you want me to put links to uh, your channels somewhere? That'd be nice. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll put them yes, in the you. I'll put them in the description. Right, shall we start then? Let us. Yeah, begin. let's go. It's only my second time watching this, actually. Oh, really? Uh, I've lost count how many times I've watched this. <laughs> St- starting now. Yes. Hmm. Is this set in 1912, like the rest of the film? Yes. Which is the when the, the original book came out. Yeah. Yeah. So this scene was only mentioned in the novel because Challenger comes back and just says, oh, yeah, I lost the evidence, and that's why no one believes him. But yeah. I think it's very, very interesting setup that they added this to the film. Yes, yeah, a good little. That's the intro. Yeah, it makes sense to include it. And th- this was all filmed by the stuntman and and uh, George Challenger as well. I, I love how the subtitles are just like Indian shouting. Yeah. No, the package. <laughs> it's interesting that they don't, uh, in the subtitles, they don't translate the language. Yeah. Oh dear. No. (laughs) (laughs) I like how he folded it away like he was reading something naughty. (laughs) Oh, this is a Park Keeper Bob's great 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 grandfather. It is. It just is. Speaking of Bob's, oh, rest in peace, Bob Hoskins. Yeah. He's even got the same accent as Bob. That's, that's so weird. We were joking, but maybe there is some connection. I reckon they are the same family. <laughs> the Bob, the Bob Dynasty. <laughs> uh, now, there's a very extended opening in the book compared to this, where we get to see Edward with Gladys being turned down. Um, oh, okay. Edward also goes to Challenger's house to try and interview him before the lecture, and th- they get into a fight. Yes, yeah, so oh. an adaptation, another one with uh, John Rhys Davies as Challenger. Oh, yeah. That was quite interesting. That is the actual... Oh, there's Dippy. Dippy Museum. Dippy's and Dippy. There. Dippy the Diplodocus. Skeleton on display for over 100 years. No longer there. 
No. Um, Replaced yeah. by a blue whale. Which is also cool. Yeah. Oh, Adrian Hodges. <laughs> the primary yes. co-creator. Is this how they met? Him and Tim Haynes. I think it was. This is where they met for making Primeval. That's so cool. It's Lord Roxton. Oh, <laughs> the absolute chad. <laughs> <laughs> They filmed all these scenes at night, didn't they? They had to because obviously the museum was open during the day, so they could only film at night. Yeah. Oh, posh British jokes. <laughs> I th they've done very well to condense all the scenes into just here. Yeah. This room isn't even in the Natural History Museum. It's somewhere else, isn't it? They did a good it's job of, a... like... Oh, sorry, go on. It's in, the, it's in a church that they set this up. Yeah. Don't you know who I am? <laughs> James Fox has just got the best expressions. He does. Now, Ch Challenger and Summerlee didn't really know each other in the book. Um, mm. there, was just a, there was just a big panel of professors lecturing everyone here, and Summerlee wasn't one of them. He was in the crowd. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> Look at that scaly kangaroo. Yes. Now that the kangaroo joke here is reference to in the book, which was written in nineteen twelve, and that's how most dinosaurs were thought to look like, which yeah, in this in this adapt in this adaptation they've modernised to them, and th that's the joke to the book. Yes, yeah, nice little. Um, yeah, and the, just talk about like because like the idea of dinosaurs at the time was that they they were like no match for mammals because there's this idea that like mammals were. Um, because, well, they led to humans, so and humans are the best, so mammals must be the best, too. Obviously, yeah. <laughs> Which, luckily, has been... That, that has been well and truly put to bed. Yeah, thankfully. It also makes for, uh, like, an interesting adaptation of the actual book, because the actual science that the, the story's based on has also progressed massively, so the even though it's a it's a like a remake, the the actual science in it has also advanced too. Mm -hmm. It's amazing how they're all sticking <laughs> sticking together like that. Rubbish. <laughs> Poppycock. <laughs> With authority. <laughs> never, never, never. <laughs> Charlatan. So Gladys's father here is a combination of two characters 
in the novel. Um, it's Gladys's boring dead uh, combined with a lecturer who okay. um who was dis in disagreement with Challenger throughout. From from what I've I've heard of the the novel, it seems like they condensed a lot of stuff, which I, th I think was probably for the best. They they did, but uh, I th I think it works very well for the the new medium. Oh yeah. Now the 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 question of money wasn't really a, a big deal in the book. They sort of just go, and that's it. <laughs> you could probably fly around the world for like eighteen pence. <laughs> yeah, I say that because I found out that Charles Darwin bought a uh, the the original Toxodon skull. He bought from like some fossil seller. In South America for eighteen pence. <laughs> That's crazy. Do we? Do we? We never see Lord Brass. Yeah. <laughs> oh my. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, technically, he would be on an obituary. <laughs> you, you just can't predict the ferocity of Jamie James Fox's eyebrows. No, they just they just they just have a mind of their own, don't they? It's like he's got one expression, and yet he does so much with it. <laughs> <laughs> he just looks constantly disgusted. <laughs> I think he's the, he's the best actor in this uh, film. I think Bob Hoskins is great as well. Yeah, he's also uh, very good. I mean, they're, yes. they're all good. All, yeah, they're all the casting well. is absolutely fabulous in this. Yeah. Bye bye. <laughs> is that how you say goodbye to your wife? Well, not his wife, but wait, is it, is it was it his wife? I, I don't know. <laughs> um, I, don't, I don't think he does. He. <laughs> I, I believe they play up how much of a ladies' man he is in th this adaptation, as opposed to the novel where he's more of of a trophy hunter, and they focus on that more. Yeah. I guess it it gives him a more interesting conflict with Edward. Yes. Because uh, he's because like, obviously Malone's much more of the the gentleman and loyal to, to Gladys, but then not so much Gladys. Yeah, see how that works out. Oh, he's just realizing. Mm -hmm. He's very much the kind of audience character for people to sympathise with. Yeah. Is he like that? Yes, I uh, pretty much because he's the one writing oh, about yeah, what's happening. So everything's from his point of view in the novel. Hmm. And he's he's also the one most out of his element. I, I yeah. guess him and Summerlee, kind of, but. <laughs> there, so. Yeah, a bit of experience. I'm trying to think. Audience surrogate—that's what they call it. Yeah. Uh, how how forward of you? Ah. <laughs> uh, oh. uh, <laughs> 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 just looks off like, hmm? oh, look <laughs> at that top hat, that dapper son. 
Oh. Roxton sideburns. And the moustache. Oh. <laughs> Why is Summerlee just stood there with his hands behind his back? He's always looking disapproved for everything. <laughs> the music in this is also really good. Oh, Nitro Express cartridge. Those are the, the ones that uh, Roland... Roland Tembo uses in Just Not Lost World. I wonder if that's a reference. Yeah, because that would have that came out in ninety seven, didn't it? Yeah. Yeah. This came out in two thousand one. Rockstar is almost like um Roland Tembo. Definitely more of a player though. Yeah. <laughs> Now, these were some of the last scenes filmed because they wanted the char- the actors to be at their strongest with the characters because this is where they're being introduced, so it's very important that they're not fumbling their lines or anything. Ah, uh, fair enough. That's another interesting point. How, like, uh, before we had a, the the term dinosaurs, it, it was like anything that was a big reptile that we didn't recognize as a regular reptile. It was a dragon. Suddenly, <laughs> it's just so unapologetic. I know. <laughs> how dare you? I love how Roxton is the reasonable one. Yes. <laughs> it's the <laughs> same man. Oh, this paddle steamer is. It was built from scratch, and it's got the fake boiler on it. Oh, yeah, there's a moment where Hoskins touches the boiler, isn't it? Is that green screen? No. No, this was filmed on a in a lake in New Zealand. Because the the Amazon River's very wide, whereas uh, most rivers are quite thin. So. Mm. Oh, oh dear! You would have burnt the town Here we. Introduced to our female lead. Hmm. Not a good swimmer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What's scary to think is that if she was a good swimmer, we may not have got sea monsters. Yes. Interesting. Oh, the haircuts on these people. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> that guy's got a, a literal bowl cut in the background. <laughs> the guy with the rope. He does. Yeah. Oh, no. Curry purry. Curry purry. It's a whopping 18 pence here. (laughs) (laughs) 
<laughs> Why? Only Roxton could wear a completely white like, like a proper suit, dress suit, to go out into the the Amazon rainforest. Yes. Yes, we have, we have to acknowledge how well dressed they are for expedition. It was it was the nineteen hundreds, wasn't it? So yeah. Now this was a live acted spider, not CGI. And it it was apparently milked before they filmed this scene, so <laughs> if there was any biting it wasn't gonna be as bad. Oh, Edward, I'm sorry, but that that white hat with that black suit, it's it's not it's not doing it for me, I'm afraid. <laughs> Somebody <laughs> <Summerly, laughs> looks so sad. Yeah. I for, God, I didn't realise how how scrawny he is. Like his arms especially are like oh my oh my goodness. Even in that sense, he and Challenger are like opposite. Yes. They're all so well dressed. Oh, that's that's the music that Edward sings later on. I just realised. Oh yeah, ah, that's a cool touch. Is now the. That... Uh, sorry. Go ahead. The characters of Agnes and the Reverend are not in the novel at all. They they're created just for this adaptation. So they can have a discussion between um, Darwinism and, like, religion. I think it works quite well. <laughs> That's interesting to note that Challenger and Summerlee have almost swapped personalities in in this adaptation. Yeah. Whereas in the book, Challenger likes to fight anyone who challenges his his um ideas and anyone who questions his science. Whereas uh, here, you can see Leo's sort of <laughs> taking his place. I, lo I love that line from Challenger. Yeah, it's good, isn't it? And um, Thumberly now has a family where I don't believe he did in the book, whereas Challenger did. And he also stole his pipe from the book as well. <laughs> I think I I feel like this makes more sense. I I feel like summarily having the family does make more sense. Yeah. 
<laughs> and you would replace signs with twaddle? Twaddle? Twaddle. <laughs> Edward's just like, oh, the parents are arguing. <laughs> It's a challenger doesn't want to rock the boat here, whereas he'd be in the thick of it in the novel. Mm, yeah. I like to think challenger doesn't get involved because I like to think he's learned not to. <laughs> he learned the hard way. Yeah. Now this is sort of setting up the um. This is setting up Roxton and Edward and um, Agnes's arc. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) Edward, the proper English gentleman. Oh. <laughs> yes, you tell him, Challenger. <laughs> He's got a very interesting voice, is the Reverend. Yeah. Uh, and, and now Summerlee's like, no, no, don't argue with the weapon. Yeah. You won't get anywhere doing that. So if, if you've watched this before, then you can pick up all the little details on why the reverend's acting this way. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Which you might not notice on the first time, but re-watching it, you can notice it very easily. Yes. Oh, he doesn't, he doesn't wave back. Mm-hmm. So th- this um, journey to the Amazon it takes almost half the book before they even get to the plateau, Ooh. whereas it's, <laughs> it's 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 kind of condensed in in here, and we spend yeah. more time on the plateau. I guess that makes sense. You can only fit so much in. Oh God, they, <laughs> those guys. Face it, they are not. Oh, <laughs> I, I would say the opposite, Edward. I think they seemed very interested in you. They were like, mm-hmm. <laughs> yes, I know how to use it. <laughs> it looked like he was trying to drink it then. Jolly girls. <laughs> Just 
just noticed that in in those boats, you you're barely above the the water. Yeah, they're very low slung. Was that a skull? Yeah, I think it, was, <laughs> it didn't really look like one. I think it was meant to be one, but um, yeah. Are those CGI flies? They must be, right? Could be. Sorry, is this an actual remedy, or is she just doing this to get back at Edward? I think it's just to get back at him. So Edward's narrations here are reference to the novel where he's everything's written from his account as in his yep. notes to the Daily Gazette. Ah, that's cool. <laughs> Seems like the insect remedy worked. <laughs> I love the subtitles. Yeah. <laughs> oh dear, Edward. <laughs> I have to ask, what has he <laughs> what has made his urine smell that bad? <laughs> on, second thought, on second thought, I don't think I want to know. <laughs> <laughs> is it asparagus that does that? Apparently. Yeah. Now, who could have set up this development? Yes. Well, I think he's been sort of sneaking around, uh, setting all these traps up, hoping that they'll wander into them. Look at this. <laughs> Did he make that? Or <laughs> well, he probably found. <laughs> or did he find it? Yeah. Yeah. Some idiot's going to step on this. <laughs> They're going to see a dead monkey. Oh, now all the Indians get scared off here, whereas um, they stay with the group all the way up to the plateau. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, I expect to be paid. So is that Kuri Kuri? Kuri Puri. Kuri Puri. Pa! The subtitles are so good. Mm -hmm. Without bearers. Having to carry our own equipment, it's unheard of. Kept that quiet. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. <laughs> what? What's he trying to stop them going for? Yeah, I like to think that <laughs> if he did actually pass the Indians, it would have been like, "Well done, chaps," <laughs> so, or or just been like, "Oh, right, see ya." <laughs> <laughs> He's got one eyebrow is much thicker than the other. Might be nervous because one eye is looking at it all the time. <laughs> 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 now, did he 
Did he just direct them directly to it, or...? I, I kind of... I mean, they do get to it, don't they? I mean, obviously he knew where the, um... the proper entrance was. They have to walk all the way around to find it, don't they? Oh, if, if you were... If you watch carefully here, you can notice the trick here. Now, Ed Edward's taken some of these bag. Yeah. Uh, depends on <laughs> depends on the type of piranha and how <laughs> and whether you're bleeding. Yes. <laughs> mm. Now, what on earth could this actually be? I, I do... I do wonder. <laughs> now, now, they did... They did wonders with these animatronics here. Yes. They seem very oversized. It's a non-venomous milk snake. Yeah. Which is a mimic of the coral snake for anyone who doesn't know. <laughs> Ditch the bag. How are his legs stuck? <laughs> <laughs> so those are all animatronic snakes yeah I'm most disappointed to have lost them he's got <laughs> such a posh accent hasn't he Oh, I can hear my cat. I'll be right back. He does not know how to talk to women. No. <laughs> this is like um, series one Connor trying to talk to Abby. Uh, they are kind of huddling together for warmth. Yeah. Oh, he's got a he's got a he's got a cleaner chin going on. <laughs> 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 His voice is so aggressive. <laughs> I, I have something in need of shooting. Mm 
The plateau. The plateau. <laughs> 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 it's like he doesn't talk, he roars, and it becomes worse. Well, that's almost like his character in the book, isn't it? He's meant to be very kind of aggressive. Um, he is, yeah. I think he's kind of putting on an accent a bit, isn't he, Bob Hoskins, for this? He's, uh, well, he was British, wasn't he? Yeah. I don't think he talks quite as aggressively as this. <laughs> it's not day speaking. So, having found the the um, caved in cave, uh, they they spend several days walking right around the plateau and get back back to where they were. <laughs> so they they cut that bit out of here. Yeah, they kind of walk around halfway and then find their way up, don't they? Now, the, the cave also collapsed due to an earthquake in the novel, whereas here it seemed to be a blasted by someone. Yes, they had mm. to they rewrote it, I think, which makes more sense if they're incorporating that character in. I think there's appeals to... Uh, like to both versions, because it's like the the more natural thing could absolutely happen. But that, I think this works better for this version, yeah, with the intentional cave in. The limitations of the encyclopedic mind. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like <laughs> it looks like a cave painting of a chinosaur. <laughs> I wonder where this was filmed. I would I would guess probably in New Zealand as well. Yeah, I would assume so. Yeah, it looks too he's got a hell of an Adam's apple. Oh, he does. <laughs> to take us off. Hmm. <laughs> 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 At <laughs> least <laughs> one finger. Oh, I saw that. <laughs> you get a very kind of um, Jurassic Park three sounding bit of music here when the uh, Tyrannodon appears. <laughs> so well, that did 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 come out the same year. Yeah, it did. So, I oh yeah. Oh, this um, is the produ the producers' hands here <laughs> because they could they couldn't release them off. In case it got away. Oh, right, okay. <laughs> Come and see what I've got. <laughs> I mean, he's got, he makes a good point. Is that an empty jar she's holding? <laughs> it might be. Here comes the pterosaur. This is actually the first use of that pteranodon model, which later gets used in Chased by Dinosaurs and Sea Monsters. Oh, yeah, it, it is. What animal was that? I think some kind of pig. Yes, it is a pig. It almost sounded like Raiders of the Lost Ark. Well, there's definitely a, one of those kind of tracks coming up, which sounds definitely exactly like the, the Well of Souls theme. This as well. A real life pterosaur. 
And you bring me a moth. Guess they'll have to cook them off now. <laughs> God, that face! Oh my god. He's so happy with himself, isn't he? Yep. Family did see this in the novel, and then they, they couldn't agree whether it was a Dimorphodon or a Pterodactylus. <laughs> so, a bit different to Tyrannodon. Okay. They might have been uh, two of the only pterosaurs discovered at the time. Hmm. I guess they made it Tyrannodon because of Jurassic Park 3 and also because it's more well known anyway. Yeah. Jurassic Park. Jurassic Park 3 came out at the same time, so they yeah, came out. couldn't have based it on that. Mm. Look at these cliffs! You get, very <laughs> lost, you get a very Lost World Jurassic Park theme track very soon. It's literally identical. <laughs> oh yeah, it does sound no. like a mix. It sounds like a mix of uh, the Dress Part Lost World. Well, it sounds almost exactly like it. Yeah, it's like um, sounds like. Oh wait, no, yeah. no. Kind of changed, the so uh, Tyrannodon had been discovered at the time. Okay. Yeah, it's uh, named in 1876, so hmm. it would have been... Hmm. I guess Tyrannodon is much bigger and more impressive. Yes. It's a really nice bit of... I assume that's CGI with the, the cliff there. The, the, wide, the wide shot is CGI, yes. Yeah, and the, when they're crossing the log, it's also CGI underneath. Yes. Obviously, they wouldn't do that to actors. Yes! That's a very convenient tree. <laughs> yeah. Was that like a... Wait, <laughs> wait. was that the sound effect? Like, I, I've heard that so many times in, in films and stuff. It's like the, the blood splatter sound. <laughs> blood splatter, sorry. Is that green screen? Um... Uh, oh, no, just... they... hmm. it, it's all filmed on site. They filmed it. They filmed in two different locations for the different shots. But when, when he's over the log, you see the CGI underneath. Yes. So what? What we're seeing now? Nice currently... crop shot there. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> it's done is the well, big, though. Yeah. This is the big railway cutting that they filmed on with with the big wide shots, and then all the close shots, they're only like three feet above the ground. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I would have, if I, if I were in this situation, I would have uh, probably would have been sat on the log and sort of dragged myself along, not trying to like, tiptoe across. That, yeah. That's exactly what they do in the novel. <laughs> oh, well... <laughs> <laughs> Good, I'm not crazy then. Except for Roxton, who just walked across with brave rigour. <laughs> well, I think fitting. Ron Tembo would have done the same thing. Oh, yeah. He would have just skipped and jumped across. Yeah, he would have just walked across. That was nothing. I'm getting my men, it's ladies first. <laughs> this part becomes very Raiders of the Lost Ark, this track. It's so good. That's that sounds, just, that's it, just it, it's old. just Raiders of the Lost Ark. Yeah. I like Who all the rest of the music for this, actually. There's a guy called Rob uh, Lane. Yes. He, he's added a lot of kind of 
references to other films like Jurassic Park and Indiana Jones and this. Very John Williams inspired. Yeah. The effects are really good for a TV film. Yeah, they do. They do really good. Look very good. Yeah. <laughs> like how it's so gentle, and then when you get to the end, it's like. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody does it pretty easily. Agnes looks shocked. He was the <laughs> oldest actor on set, wasn't he? He was about 60 something. Oh, poor choice of words there, Roxton. <laughs> <laughs> He's just plumped into your death. The idea of this challenger falling and yelling is amazing. <laughs> 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 That's just how he normally talks. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. If you reverse that, it's, it's Father Christmas. Oh, fitting with what day this came out. Oh, yeah. I like how Roxton says, hold on. Like, he's got a better idea of what to do. I just ran across. He yeah. just ran. No. I'm sure there's <laughs> nothing important in that bag. Save the package. <laughs> Not to worry, it's just all of our supplies that will probably die with that. This part sounds a bit like the Stegosaurus theme from The Lost World. Jurassic Park, I mean. Oh, the music is turned. Yeah. Evil intention. Oh, George. <laughs> So, because the Reverend wasn't in the novel, uh, in this, in the, one of the bearers had a grudge against Roxton, and he's like, "I've been, I've been waiting to get my revenge on you this whole time, and that's why he tipped the log." Oh, that's odd. I think this, this is much more powerful, and much better. Oh yeah. No, Roxton. <laughs> like if that if that Bera wanted to get his revenge on Roxon, he could have done it at any time without causing any trouble for the others. Yeah. Okay, now he's literally about to he's, he's genuinely trying to commit <laughs> murder right now. Oh, the way Roxon bashes against the cliff here, he could have easily been killed. Oh, yeah. And just look how forceful it gets against it. Oh. Oh, jeez. That's a broken... That's a broken rib or two. Yes. At least. <laughs> yes, yes, I'm peachy. Yes, yes indeed. I think <laughs> he, he uh, ad-libbed that line, didn't he? The actor. He did, yes. Only he could be hanging off a cliff like, and smile. Yeah. I love how they've all got the exact same <laughs> disgusted, like, mouth partly open facial expression there. <laughs> All right. Bye. <laughs> what if he just fell? <laughs> he just he fell just all the way down. Slips. He just slips down, yeah. <sighs> now, oh, no, that's now, also, one of the other bearers was there, and he, 
he just sits on the pinnacle for the rest of the book and just throws supplies across to the explorers. Oh, okay. That's quite funny. Huh. Whereas here they're stuck until the end. Yes. I think this was also where they filmed uh, episode three of Prehistoric Park. Oh, it might have been. Yeah, I think I think it's the the same forest. You do get a very similar scene to Prehistoric Park later on, which I'll point out. Also, obviously, they filmed um, episode five of Walking with Dinosaurs in the same sort of location. Oh yeah, they did. Yeah. yeah. He's like this, just being betrayed by her uncle for unknown reasons. Mm. Oh, yeah. Apologies if you can hear my cat in the recording. He decided he was very lonely. <laughs> I feel like if you're in the the Amazon rainforest, keeping warm is one of the few problems. <laughs> it's one of the problems you wouldn't have. Yeah. Then again, I get, it's a lot more temperate in actual New Zealand where they filmed it. Definitely. Comes the same tune. <laughs> <laughs> Is that humming? <laughs> well, this is the first uh, exclusive creature for this film, isn't it? Um, yes, I think so. It's a new model. Yes. Yeah, because it doesn't appear in anything else, does it? Do we know That's what just... species this is meant to be? Uh, Hilophodon. Hypsilophodon, okay. yeah. That's what I said. <laughs> <laughs> I like how he keeps the gun right on his crotch. Oh, that is a that is a funky looking hypsilophodon. It's almost got the same uh, patterning as the Otnelia from the Battle of Big Al. Yeah. Is it a mod is it a modified CGI model or is it a new one? I think the head's new, but everything else looks the same. Yeah. It does have the Dryosaurus model. Uh, like body. That head is so weird. Uh, Pandalizes. <laughs> it doesn't look like it's got much of a beak, which is odd. The head's also quite, like, blocky. Yeah, it's very oddly shaped. It's interesting that they made Hypsilophodon for this film because uh, they had the perfect opportunity to show show it off in uh, the Walker with Dinosaurs episode, Giant of the Skies, because it would have lived alongside Iguanodon and Polacanthus. Yes. There's a little <laughs> jump scare here with the Iguanodon appears. Oh, wow. Yeah. I think... I was this guy's Sorry, pretty much identical to uh, the one in Walking with Dinosaurs, isn't it? I think so, yeah. I think they just think sort of took the... Light, yeah, slightly modified, but yes, it is. Yeah, it's a lot stripier. Yeah. And then they reuse this in uh, Land of Giants, don't they? I think yeah. so, just shrunk them down a bit. God, that Iguanodon is huge. Like, I always forget how big Iguanodon is. Yeah, it's one of the few ones that they portray that isn't oversized. In Agnes, the, come like, stand in front of me. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Be my human it's... shield. <laughs> See how it moves on four legs, not two. <laughs> you are guessing and you know it. That's got to be the same practical head model. That is a brilliant... That... Wow, that looks fantastic. Also interesting how it managed to get all the way to South America, but <laughs> I 
It's like the pteranodons. It's like, okay, that makes sense. They could have flown there, but... Yeah. All the other animals, it's sort of like... Hmm. Give them nostrils flaring. <laughs> <laughs> It's like look, we put all the time and effort into making the mechanisms work. We're gonna show it off. Yes. <laughs> oh my god, you shot Figaro! <laughs> In the book, all he wants to do is shoot an iguanodon and stuff and mount it. That looked like the the prop of um... the dinosaur. Yeah, had off. the little weird teeth. And the, yeah. the head didn't look the same. Could have been made from the same um, casting. Yeah, probably. Because obviously the original had its head ripped off. <laughs> yeah, the head is so weird on that. Yeah, the body's fine. I imagine it's because it's just copied. Oh, that. Oh, that's it where is, they filmed. Pretty yeah, yeah, park, yeah. park reference. Awesome. Well, technically, the cool. park is Here it the is. world reference. Wow, uh, that <laughs> that is literally the shot from <laughs> episode three of Prehistoric Park. Is it the exact same shot that they used? Almost. That last but shot was more or less the same. Agnes is <laughs> doing the work. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, steady on, Roxton. <laughs> I do like the patterning they've got on the wings of these ones. Oh, yeah. It's very That's sort cool. of... Yeah, it's a nice design. Identical models are the ones used mm -hmm. in later walking with. It's aged quite well as, as well. I, yes, I think this is one of the, the bestly animated scenes. <laughs> I mean, like, from it, it's it's aged a little bit because, like, pterosaur wings are now thought to be more rounded rather than having like the really pointed tips. But for the time, this was really good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they do oh, an animation trick here where the pterosaurs are on the ground, and then in the next scene, they're up in the air because they didn't know how to animate them taking off. Oh, that's odd. I mean, they presumably worked out with the one of the Kairos, though, so surely they know how to do it. You, you don't see him taking off either. I do like the coloration they have more. Yeah, it's a nice. I think it's almost. I don't know if I prefer it. <laughs> Come on! <laughs> Come on! Oh, yeah, the beaks should probably curve upwards a bit as well, but I think that was another. Discovery that happened afterwards. I think I think these ones have small teeth as well, but they get removed later on for walking with. Oh, okay. What? Wow, so there's <laughs> two. <laughs> <laughs> like his arms didn't move; he just went. <laughs> he just went down. Did that pterosaur just punch Roland or uh, Roxton? Where did Roland oh, come? Roland. Oh, Ro Roland, <laughs> Roland Tembo. Basically, the same character. It Look how many pterosaurs are in this scene. God, there's a lot, and they're all just sort of like, eh. Which one do I shoot? <laughs> May I borrow your rifle? D D Rox, how did you fall over then? <laughs> did you just trip? Well, they're obviously reacting to nothing, but if the, the CGI animators obviously didn't put something in there at that point. <laughs> Oh, whoops. Oh, oh, okay. How on earth is that thing still flying? If it, if it got, got a shot anywhere... You've got a, got a cap in his ass. <laughs> <laughs> Just wait, there's now two dinosaur property... Like media properties from two thousand and one that have Tyrannodon with teeth. Well, 
I wonder if that was inspired by Jurassic Park 3. I guess they didn't know at that time, because it only just came out. No. So, uh, fun fact, the name Pteranodon means toothless wing. So <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what their excuse... Well, like, I guess Jurassic Park has the excuse yeah. of, like, oh, they're... They're, they're like, clones, you can forgive that. But... Yeah. I don't know what you're playing at, Lost World, because you've been doing pretty well so far. About to get the uh, Allosaurus attack. At this point, we're going to see a, a big sluggish toad creature coming out of the forest. With covered in warts. <laughs> covered in warts in the novel. <laughs> what, standing up His Gladys. <laughs> well. <laughs> Now, there's, there's a lot more development and camaraderie between the characters here. I mean, most of them still don't know each other very well in this adaptation. The sound design in this is excellent. Mm hmm. Surely they could just get another tree cut down and put it across the gap. That oh, tree? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> wow, that tree. perfect timing. Yes. This is a cool... That's a really cool electronic. Okay, how does the Allosaurus look so good? <laughs> <laughs> Apart from the pronation, obviously, and the uh, shrink wrap. Shrink wrap, yeah. I love the coloration on this Allosaurus. The green yeah, is very it's, it's very, very different good. from the walking with. Is that the same coloration from the polar Allosaur? Almost. Yeah, yeah, very similar. It's got more red. It just kind of walks away at that point. Okay. Like, uh. Well, he got fire shoved in his face. <laughs> Bye! Nothing beats the big outside, though, in terms of <laughs> awesome quality yeah i think i think out of the three allosaurus that frame store made i think big al is probably my favorite it's got the coolest design to it but do you think the lost world one's a bit more accurate um maybe a little bit <laughs> hmm. Even when he's having his wounds tended to, he looks disgusted with the world. <laughs> Oh, squeak chair, please. Pig headedness is all one word. <laughs> now that is an insult. We got an oh. introduction oh, to yeah. it's the fabulous ape man. Yeah. Oh, it's a good thing Kathy's not here. <laughs> wow, that is just straight up chimpanzee noises. It's the same sound they use for the Australopithecus and walking with beasts. Oh yeah, the one that cheated death. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if they reuse these costumes at all for anything. They look quite different to the Walking with Cavemen ones. Oh. Oh. Oh dear. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's twice now. Edward's fallen out of a tree. Oh my god. Oh. How have you not broken any bones? <laughs> that, 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 so that's twice he's fallen out of a tree already. <laughs> <laughs> I 
orangutans are apes. I was about to say the same thing. <laughs> They're so disturbing in this, aren't they? Oh. Oh. They're like the um, 2001 Space Odyssey apes, aren't they? Yeah. This is like, it's Uncanny Valley. Mm-hmm. Where it's like almost human, but just not quite. That it's really creepy and unsettling. Yes. It's like early CGI humans. Oh, it's like, it's like the, 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 the Yeah, and the Polar Express especially. Yeah. Like films like that, it's like really... <laughs> uh, Bigfoot and Sasquatch and Yeti are all, also fall into that category where it's just very human, but just yeah, not it's, quite. It's, it's fascinating stuff, but very disturbing as well. This bit's funny in the novel when challenges like, I, anyone can name a, a lake or river after themselves. I'm above that. And then Edward's <laughs> like, oh yeah, I'll, I'll call it Lake Gladys. <laughs> <laughs> this is just very shut up, Roxon. <laughs> I like Roxon. <laughs> you would be very proud. I'd, I would be. I would be honest. I would be honored if I had a lake named after me. Whoa, whoa. That'd be that would be so cool. Lake Hodgepodge. <laughs> Somebody looks so done. <laughs> um, we're re- reaching the end of part one of this TV film. Yeah. Yeah, I haven't decided yet if I'm going to split this up into uh, two separate parts or just have it as all as one long thing. But uh, you'll probably, if you're watching this, you'll probably already know the answer to that. <laughs> We'll, uh, we'll we'll see how we we'll see how we go. Yeah, you can always pause it halfway through. Yeah, see. exactly. I think Gladys gets quite easily offended by Malone. You mean Agnes? <laughs> yeah, sorry, not Gladys. How 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 did it not see or hear them? I think this this uh, model is identical to the um, big owl one with think, a new head. I think it is with a new head sculpt. Yes. Yeah, I know they definitely uh, made a new oh animatronic God. head. This, this, that turn. Yes. We they specifically that. asked Frame Store just to do a slight head turn there, Excellent. and it looks so good. You get some very Jurassic Park music here. Oh, yeah. I like right. how it's just sort of walking very slowly. <laughs> oh, God. Edward, I, I, he's so clumsy. I'm amazed he's made it this far. <laughs> wow, they did a really good job of uh, pushing the ferns out of the way. It's like with that the... show in Park with the Troodon, isn't it? Oh, yeah. That's one of the best sequences. Just Jurassic Park music now, just getting the raptor theme. Oh yeah, it is. Like like it looks it it looks like they're they all all the plants are moving perfectly. God, he's taking little st- <laughs> tiptoe steps there. He's just having a bit of a play. Yeah. <laughs> it looks great. Also, this is more like a Jurassic environment as well, which is interesting. They've also got a very nicely. Go. Ah. <laughs> My leg. Look at him, it's My leg. <laughs> no elephant that... noises. That's the that's the halfway point, isn't it? Ah. Part three. Yeah, I love the uh, how they they sh- they frame it so you can only see the practical head and the leg with the close. Yeah, up. obviously that's all they have. It's great. It's pretty graphic, isn't it? It is. It's they did a good job graphic. of like uh, stretching the skin where it's been impaled. Mm-hmm. Oh, this shot here with the eye um, 
people dilating. Oh wow! Oh. Yeah. Poor Allosaurus. Yeah, I do. I do feel bad for it. It was just. <laughs> well, after all the Ceratosaurus it's been eating, it gets it deserves. <laughs> Hashtag justice for Ceratosaurus. Yeah. <laughs> You'd be very good at writing bad novels. <laughs> and now we like each other. Yes, bonding moment. We survived death, so yes, we now like each other. <laughs> oh. I reckon that you... should have been the ending of the you... first half. Yeah. New piece of music here. Yeah, I like the little uh, clicky down sound, whatever they use. This yeah, looks I like think the lake in Prehistoric Park. Yeah. I, I think Edward spends the next two, three days looking for the rest of them because they got <laughs> kidnapped. Oh, that music. Yeah, slightly unsettling music. This is so creepy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You're bound to hit something. <laughs> you can't miss with this. Was that? A big cat roar incorporated into this sound like that. Maybe. Yeah. This this music's very um almost like the the jungle book. Well it was with the drums. I love how the they're so capable of just making two humans run through a forest. I know. It's quite funny. Like, they just grab them by the arms and they're just like, oh, you're going to come with us. Like, they don't, like, try and, like... Oh, what's the word? Like, they don't try and, like, hold them down, like, restrain them or anything. Mm -hmm. Just grab them and run. How can you hear them from that far away? But did did they get the feathers from feathered dinosaurs? Yeah, Ooh, that's, that's maybe a question, isn't it? Because yeah, they look like um, better paradise feathers. Keep getting distracted with just watching the episode. I know. <laughs> God, that guy's back. God, this lumbar support is not working out. Oh, this 
sort of all... <laughs> it's 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 not yeah. It's... yeah. Oh, that baby looks like the uh, the same prop from. <laughs> what were you saying, Minister? Um, it, even during this scene, the two professors are mm-hmm. arguing on what species the apes are. Yes. <laughs> It's it's not bad enough that they they look creepy. They act creepy as well. Now this seems even more creepy in this adaptation because the original the the eight men just get all the Indians to jump off the edge of the plateau. Oh, okay. Just for fun, they like force them to jump. Oh, Whereas, uh, it's a bit uh, darker here. Now jump, as you're as we're about to see. Listen to my voice. <laughs> jump. I feel like if anyone could have an army of ape men, it would be it would be Helen Cutter. <laughs> yes. Yeah, this is pretty gruesome. Oh, I forgot about this bit. No, my strawberry jam all over the rock. God, they got fast to the bones. <laughs> so, no, the has Cap- got him. Professor Challenge is supposed to have a really big bushy beard and almost be like ape like in his physique. And <laughs> and you'll notice the, the the lead ape has like a beard as well and because of that, him and the uh, the lead ape are sort of become friends and they're like joking around and for some <laughs> reason. Okay. Oh cool details that um some of these Beard starting to grow. Yeah, that is it. Yeah. Oh, and the wife, I guess. Oh wow, there's a lot of blood on that on that rock. <laughs> <laughs> I like to think that was just the actor <laughs> trying not to puke. Yeah. Terrible. <laughs> Why have they got the oars from the boat? I mean, they weren't... They're not very useful against the Dinosuchus. This is a complete accident. The drop on his face. Worked really well, though. Yeah. When did the rock... He's very lucky the rock didn't land on him anyway. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, that was lucky. Edward, you missed. (laughs) (laughs) Did that just get stabbed in the chest? You did. Did that one just do karate and (laughs) or like kung fu? Hmm. Get off of me. (laughs) <laughs> they need finishing off. <clears throat> I believe I believe him saying they must be finished off is a another novel reference because even at this point challenges look like oh I guess we should finish them off since they're so dangerous and then they go ahead and proceed and destroy all the apes. No, no, they they kill all the the males and then they take all the females to become slaves. Oh, oh no! Uh, what? <laughs> oh no! What? <laughs> Put back in their rightful place, according to the author. Like, wow. Okay. Huh. 
how are they keeping those apes there? They're not even kind of bound with their hands. <laughs> oh dear. Are they I mean, strictly cannibals? I was about to say, I don't think that's how cannibalism works. You should know better, yeah. George. So this location is called Arthur's Pass in New Zealand, and it's also where the Chronicles of Narnia, The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe was filmed. Oh, yeah, it does yes, look that, similar. That location. The final, final, final battle. It, it's the exact location. I checked yeah, it out. That location's been used for a lot of films. Was any of Lord of the Rings filmed there? It looks similar, but I don't think so. Um, looks a bit like Rohan, but I don't know. Oh, Challenger. It really <laughs> is. is God, cutting deep there, Summerly. Intolerable. I should point out now that the the language here was actually made up for this. Oh, adaption. okay, that's cool. Where they used a mixture of Portuguese and uh, native Amazonian language. Hmm, that's cool, and that that's yeah, because those are the two languages native to there. If they weren't planning to keep it. <laughs> Look at her face, like, yeah, cook them up. If they weren't planning to keep these apes alive, why have they got the cage already? Uh... Uh, to keep domestic animals, I believe. Oh, that that makes sense. Sense. Uh, th that's what I'd guess. wonder what kind of livestock they've got. <laughs> oh. I'll answer that question in a minute. Yes. So, um, Padre Mendoza wasn't in the novel either. This this was made up. Uh, they actually find the plateau because an American, like recently, found the plateau and had a picture of a Stegosaurus, and that's why Challenger wanted to come find it. Oh, interesting. Whereas, whereas they've added this background for the Indians and how they found the plateau and you can see all the um portuguese armor there as well from the 16th century that's yeah, really yeah, cool that's, uh, somebody wears that helmet later on doesn't he yeah i think you also know so oh uh, i was just i think all of the um the the quote unquote indians are actually like native new zealand like Mau of Maori descent, like native yeah. New Zealand people. Uh, it was a, yes, it was a mixture of Maoris and um, a f like I think a Chilean football team was <laughs> there, and they got them to, <laughs> to to be background characters as well. Oh, I always love how and anything Impossible Pictures is involved with. They always have something weird, like the like dinosaur saliva is KY jelly. <laughs> yeah. And um, you'll notice the chief and the chief's son are wearing pieces of armour from the Portuguese. Oh, that's cool. If you remember in part one, the, the lower end of the cave was had been blasted as well. Yes. I wonder who that was. <laughs> Perfectly balanced. <laughs> so the the Indians and the dinosaurs coexisting there, 
It's because they were they were keeping the iguanodon as livestock, and oh, they they had them marked. So whenever they were hungry, they'd just go out and bring an iguanodon in and chop it up. <laughs> Marie. She looks like she's got scan lines going down her face. <laughs> it's like she hasn't fully loaded yet. Yes. I do really like the tattooing and tribal markings that they've got. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah, really cool. What a woman. <laughs> you just ate a, a witchetty grub. Yeah. Mmm. <laughs> mm. God, they, that that was a bit close. They, they were that was a bit of a revealing clothing they had there. They had to try very hard to get the, <laughs> the very careful shots with that. <laughs> Ape man snarls. <laughs> This actor was really trying to get out, and he told them, force me down while I try to escape. <laughs> That's cool. If no humans are animals. Mm -hmm. Oh man, I thought you were cool. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they make up over a game of footy. <laughs> <laughs> Foreshadowing. Oh, that face. Oh, that one yes. is the same yes, one. This, this, this exact one and Roxton have an encounter later. Yes. And this is when Agnes starts to realise Roxton's not quite who she, she thought he was. Mm. Like <laughs> that head nod. You're a human being. You have a choice. Oh my gosh. That's the exact line. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Was he just waiting for Ruxton to leave? Yeah, he's lurking behind them. 
time for me to swoop in. Proceed with the montage. I like this sequence. Oh, a walking dinosaur is Brachiosaurus. Yeah. Very cool. I forgot how long the legs are. <laughs> Puff. <laughs> Puff. That's Summerlee's pipe. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Is that CG? I don't know. <laughs> Maybe a miniature or something. I love that suit he's got. Yeah. Oh. The eggs are very kind of dusty. Right and they're all, all covered in muck for some reason. Maybe that's to disguise them by defecating over them. I guess so. Or maybe they're just very lousy parents. <laughs> oh, we get a very... Oh, here we go. Was, is one of them using the oar from the boat? Is it? Oh, they yeah. are, yes. This is a very odd little sequence. I'm not sure why they put this thing in. <laughs> She's gyrating. Oh. A lot of very convenient paths. Oh, look. it's Now, I don't mind there being prehistoric mammals in here, like in the novel, but then this is the only one, so it seems very out of place. Yeah, it's very mm. odd. Yeah, I, th I think I would have preferred if they kept a more a more consistent. Oh, jeez. Oh, <laughs> Very small. Ah, yes. Oh, oh, yeah, they took the the spines off it. But it's but the not one the... in the background has spines. Oh, oh. The babies are massive here, aren't they? Oh, whoa. That's so... I, that's so weird. Maybe it's meant to be like sexual dimorphism where the males only have them? Yeah, maybe. Because like, that clearly wasn't the Apatosaurus from Big Al because they've got the spotted pattern. Like, they literally just took the Diplodocus and took the spines off. That is, that is so weird. I like how he's got like he's got like a red paint mustache. <laughs> yeah. And he's got like the green lantern <laughs> eye mask. I would assume that yeah, paint they've got on is meat. permanent because <laughs> it doesn't seem to come off or anything. Mmm, intelligent meat. Intelligent heart. Yum. You would think they would try to learn the, the language a little bit, seeing how long they've been there. <laughs> wano! There is so Wano! <laughs> That's another good um, emoji face. Yes. Yeah. 
here's the more um human qualities coming through in the eight minutes. Yeah, I really like this. Hmm. <laughs> so called the pterosaur guano. Challenges that will fit. Challenger, what are you wearing? <laughs> <laughs> Challenger and eight men grunt. Something's wrong. They're communicating. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the deleted sea monsters segment would have gone here, I think. Yes, Tim Haynes told the the guys making it that he wanted sea monsters put into this scene, but um, it didn't quite work out due to time and the difficulty of filming. And Elaine Cassidy here on the day, she's like, "Oh yeah, I'm no very good swimmer." <laughs> so, oh well, never mind. <laughs> Well, we got sea monsters out of it, so um, maybe maybe it was for the best. Yes. Sweetest little mouth. What? Uh -huh. <laughs> you know what they say about pizzas. <laughs> Small toes. Well, that was the raptor <laughs> sound from Primeval just then. That's a little squeaky sound that they make. That's it. It's confirmed they're in the same universe. Mm -hmm. What if all of the... <laughs> everything made by Impossible Pictures is in the same universe? Of course. Even though all the creatures look different across everything. Yes. Well, maybe they're just different subspecies. Uh, there's it's literally three of... different T-Rexes. Yeah. Yes. the Pixar theory. We need the Impossible Picture theory. <laughs> The walking with cinematic universe. That would be awesome. Except not the, the movie. That doesn't count. It's walking with in name only. <laughs> Has she been wearing those under her like regular clothes this whole time? She must be. That seems like it must be so hot though. So this is not like... in New Zealand, yeah. Calming music. Well, obviously, you know something bad's going to happen later on, so it's like um, the calm before the storm. So it's slightly uneasy. Meanwhile, Summerley gets to work on his ingenious plan. <laughs> most, most of the novel, he's just complaining to Challenger is like, why aren't you f devising a way for us to get down? And it's Challenger who does most of it, so. I think for the sort of final act of this, he's not really present very much for the kind of entire sequence later on. <laughs> he's, in the, he's in the cave. Where can I get a pair of long johns? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was just, I was like just... That. what is going on with those pants? So <laughs> <laughs> here's another um, change where, in the original, the the dinosaurs just turn up for some reason. Mm. But that, and the eight men were already dead at this point, so they that interestingly made them the reason why the dinosaurs turn up. Oof. So is this because um, they're mourning 
I think they know how to call the dinosaurs. Yeah, kind of. That's that's how I thought of it. So it's like a strategic, like, oh, I know how we could get out of here. Yeah. Or is this? Or is this like? Do you think it's more yeah. like a just a revenge sort of thing? <laughs> oh, could, oh, could my... be, but it's it's definitely planned on their part because they disguise themselves. Um, they were drawing a dinosaur in the dirt, weren't they? Yes. Oh, oh great. <laughs> I for- I forgot that Summerlee is just in the cave. This whole, this yeah, whole he thing happens. Entire, he entire. has no idea what's going on. Yeah. <laughs> Job description. E. Why does that one in particular hate Roxon so much? Was that the one that was going to be sacrificed in his honor? Yeah. Okay. Oh, we almost got a bit of bum crack then. <laughs> I like how they've both got different colours, these two. Yeah, there's a green one and a brown yeah, one. There, there was meant to be just two, like, but different sizes, but the same colour, but they found it a bit confusing, so they had to change the bigger one to brown to slightly <laughs> differentiate it. <laughs> that, in the chest. Yeah, that actor got some pain there, yeah. Yeah. Oh. So now they're being quiet to try and like evade the parasites. Lovely. And so now, oh, oh, and so now they're hiding their scent. Yes. Okay. All these two are doing. Oh, cool. They actually man kill it. Okay. Hmm. More Jurassic Park music. I wonder if that is, is that's just what they call the dinosaurs. Like, if that's what they just call the allosaurs, they call them man killers. That would be sure. cool. Oh, there's nothing but poop there. <laughs> No, that didn't work. Oh. <laughs> Shut up! No match for Bob's. Or Bob's fence wooden, post. No match wooden for fence. Yeah. Why? Everything's always wood. I. <laughs> oh. Ah! He gets his arm, this guy. Oh. Oh, he needs, he needs the Wilhelm scream. Yeah, they need to. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Just gonna let you know. Bye. Guys, you so could at least stop remotely rolling. aim at it. Guys, it's huge. <laughs> they keep that, missing. And, and that that's the small one as well. Oh yeah, <laughs> but it's the brown one, it's the big one, isn't it? They they just overtook the brown one. Yeah. How? What? Were they like staying together? I I don't know. <laughs> I wonder if <laughs> I wonder if one of them's like one one's meant to be male and the other's female. Probably. Maybe. Because I would guess the one with the big red crest it would be the the the, the male. Then the the brown one would be the female. The brown one actually looks like the Giganotosaurus from Land of Giants. I was just thinking that, yeah. yeah it does. Hmm. 
<laughs> Dit, ditch the bag. Ditch the bag. Wow, it's like the exact color. It, it seems that uh, Land of Giants took a lot of inspiration from this. Mm-hmm. Shoot him in the ass. <laughs> oh wow! Oh. Shot right. Oh god! It's just like, huh? What was that? Look, it, it's like the base of its tail and its cloaca just got like the the pubic boot just got shot, and it was just like. Eh. Oh no, what a reveal. It's not such a cliche. <laughs> it looked like she had feather ears then. Yes. God, that, the, the CG looks so good. It does. Just give it a knife! It's not even a knife, it looked more like a machete. <laughs> that poor oh, guy oh, just oh, got. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh no. I thought the eight men are just like, yep. <laughs> you guys deserve this. God, this little girl just keeps screaming. Mm-hmm. You'd think she'd get the idea. Also, though, the huts are made out of hides from the Iguanodon. Oh, yeah. that's cool. <laughs> Edward, why yep. would you stick your head up? Yeah, this is very interesting that they decide to help him because he's helped them. Yeah, that's quite cool. I thought they'd just pull his head down. <laughs> so yeah. Just look at him. I know, it's terrifying. Well, if you're... Tr- okay, Edward, if you're trying to be... <laughs> maybe don't move your head around. So it's going to pull a JP3 Stratosaurus moment. <laughs> yeah, that is very interesting that they do, they help him. Like, they're intelligent enough to realize that, oh no, he's got a knife! <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, they do call it an elephant gun. Follow me. Shooter. Matilda can't resist a moving target. <laughs> what if he accidentally shot her? <laughs> oh. Got it in the heart and the neck. Oh. Oh. Yeah, that thing's dead. That thing's definitely dead. This whole time, Summerlee is still just in the cave. Yes. Yes, he is. I'll oh, save you. Oh, oh. two Alasaurus oh. that have been stabbed. Oh my god! Catch him! Oh, he's dead. How is that thing alive? That must hurt a lot. <laughs> well, well, it's just through its mouth, though. It's not through the brain or anything. I, I guess, yeah. But they they do very well with the animation. Showing he's in pain, mm. and not just not just a mindless creature, like in the novels. <laughs> yes, it's also not a kangaroo. Go on, poop man. <laughs> not yet. <laughs> not yet. Okay. Another barrel. Stevens, for God's sake, will you shoot it? The wind took it. Quick as you like, Steve. Damn thing keeps moving. Yeah, that's what they do. Stephen, will you shoot it? Oh. oh. Wasted. Like how it keeps walking before it falls over. How does it not fall on him? <laughs> It's like, did I just get shot by poop? I believe that's the only shot where there's two Allosaurus in the same 
Apart from the apart from the opening, that's the only scene at the campsite where they're together. Hmm. They look so good. Yes. They did Allosaurus look so good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dirty work. <laughs> with the back of the arsehole. <laughs> Meanwhile, <laughs> I just didn't hear any of that. Come and see what I've done. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Somali. What happened here? <laughs> Luke, you were right. You were right about me. That guy is an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> Buster Cap in his ass for me. <laughs> My dying wish. <laughs> I shouldn't laugh, but it was, it's something funny about it. <laughs> Why is it, uh, somehow the things in this movie that roar the most are the people? <laughs> <laughs> A challenger, yeah. The Plato! Dog, shut up. Come on! Nope. Oh, where's Minister gone? I'm not sure. Shall I pause? Uh, maybe ask him in the in the recording talk. <laughs> I think maybe his internet might have cut out. Uh, that's the only thing I can think of. He's still online, though. Oh. Hmm. Curious. The problem with uh, I don't I don't think we should pause because um, yes yeah, a live that, stream isn't it? yeah or not a live stream you know what I mean uh, yeah just otherwise it interrupts people who are trying to watch it as well exactly yeah well hopefully Minister will rejoin sooner rather than later yes. It feels so weird seeing like a tribal man holding a gun. <laughs> it's yeah. Something about it just doesn't feel right. It's very odd, isn't it? It's got like a tribal monobrow. <laughs> <laughs> Kiss the ground. <laughs> he looked like he was giving a thumbs up then. Yeah. Uh. Well, like when Connor does in series three, episode five, is it? <laughs> oh no, it, hang on. Oh yeah, yeah, it is when he's like freezing. Yeah, is that one okay? Yeah. 
Minister, where have you gone? Gonna have to start spamming him like Ben now. Yes. Yeah, he's he's not online anymore. I'm guessing his oh. internet's gone. Yeah, that's a shame. Hmm. Just wrecked the place and then just ran. <laughs> The real world. What are you talking about, Somali? <laughs> Malone, uh, Edward's been covered in his own urine and someone else's feces. <laughs> yes. It's, 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 it's not going well. <laughs> Why does her face look so dumbfounded there? <laughs> <laughs> what are the odds that he would just be he just happened to be <laughs> stood out here when they got out he's probably been kind of wandering around the bottom trying to oh hello minister oh minister you're back yeah my phone died ah uh, we thought so we are just saying how it's kind of <laughs> it's uh, quite a coincidence that the Reverend just happened to be right here. Well, obviously he knew this entrance was here, didn't he? So he maybe tried to guard it because he knew that would be the other way down for them. Oh, Dumbly's had enough. Yeah, somebody has a little tussle here, doesn't he? God has spoken to me. <laughs> 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 it's like that meme where the, the lady's pointing at the cat who goes, Gah! Yeah, yeah. Bonkers. <laughs> very bold of Summerly to just very <laughs> gun pointed at him to just be like wow, wow. no I've had quite enough of your rubbish sir <laughs> Malone checks Summerly over in case he got shot as well yeah. I mean he shot himself the fool not, not Summerly the reverend yeah, yeah. He's rubbing his knee, even though he shot himself in... <laughs> Where did he shoot himself? Somewhere in the stomach. In the gut, in the gut. yeah. So, yeah, he's tried to hide the plateau because he's... It, um... Clashed with his beliefs. Hmm. <laughs> Don't you tell me what my god is and isn't. <laughs> no, Uncle, you tried to kill me. What happened to his? What happened to his shoes? Oh yeah. Uh, they got eaten by the plot monster. <laughs> so yeah. John Roxton didn't die in the novel. He came back to London with them. Well, he doesn't die in this one either. Is he just is he just lying flat? Yeah, he looks like <laughs> paralyzed. Uh, pretty sure it was. <laughs> As much as I discipline, as much as I disagree with them, right. 
Professor! It makes a weird noise to call him over, doesn't it? It's like, yeah, hey! Yeah, yeah, hey! Yeah, hey! <laughs> yeah, hey! And this, this, we get the only piece of non original music later in a sec, the kind of fanfare when they come back to England. They got extremely lucky that they just happened to be here. <laughs> what, what are they doing there exactly? Just doing no, their... you're... Yeah. You remember that that guy was sitting on the pinnacle waiting for them to come back? So, oh yeah, that that's sort of how they get back later. <laughs> the, the one that they didn't have in this version, and yet they used to see explanation. Sure. The Challenger expedition. They're constantly arguing. So he managed to keep the the contents of that box completely secret from everyone. On the boat ride, no. I think I think the others know. Well, they have. I don't. Uh, somebody asks him later on, and he doesn't seem to know. It's almost like Monty Python's Flying Circus. This one. I was literally thinking that. Yeah. Oh, squeak chip, please. Oh, he's. Toad in the whole reference to the Allosaurus being toad-like in the novel? Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. Because so, you can also call it frog in bog. <laughs> oh. Frog in a bog. <laughs> Monty Python's flying circus. Yeah. Top hats and boulder hats. Oh, <laughs> yes. Me laddie. <laughs> Horatio. You Bob. No, your name's Bob. Sorry. Um, you've made me love dinosaurs so much, I'm going to look after them. No. Spit. Oh, there's no sense for me, Spit. <laughs> <laughs> really, really stretching those lines when it comes to the references. <laughs> sort your collar out, sir. Yeah. I believe that's the style. Maybe. Lack thereof. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Again, what what's going on with the flat cat? Why? <laughs> but you can do so much. Better. I wonder which street that is in London. Hmm. What's she been up to? All sorts of things. <laughs> Mr. Hair. Hair being the optimal word. <laughs> How magnificent.
What? What? <laughs> not not sure how you did that, mate. He's having his moment of realization here. Yeah. <laughs> don't thank God I don't have to spend the life with her. Dodged a bullet. Sucker punch. <laughs> <laughs> no wonder she left you. Oh. Yeah, you can definitely tell this was written by Adrian Hodges. <laughs> It's definitely very primeval esque. Plodding, boring sort. Mm, much like the dinosaurs in the original. <laughs> mm. Yeah, you can tell it's filmed at night, can't you? <laughs> yeah. I mean, this one is probably. This one is actually set at night, this scene. Oh, yeah. Don't we all? Yes. I'd like to avoid London at the best of times. <laughs> God, I forget how dramatic. I wonder oh, if that was. Yeah. I wonder if that was an actual photo they just took, or is it just a light that went on for the scene? <laughs> My first thought was it was a it was a firework. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> so aggressive. That audience is reacting subtitles. <laughs> yes. Sub applause. <laughs> <laughs> the subtitles, what are they doing? What is that hat? I feel like this character should have been in it a bit more, so we know she, who she is, really. Asking you! <laughs> Edward! <laughs> That audience is murmuring. Yes. Now's not the time, Edward. Why don't you ask me yourself? <laughs> Are you really doing this now? <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> I like how they don't make a big deal out of that, but like. <laughs> And that was a practical effect there. Well, that was Rawr. the high note to the sound. Did it just break off the chain? It did. Maybe it slipped off. Wait, does that one have spots? It does. Does it? Huh. 
And then the adults have stripes. I guess it's camouflage, like like deer have. And this yeah. is why Prehistoric Park doesn't have an aviary. <laughs> Bob got fed up. He's seeing what happens. <laughs> well, it's kind of the roof's kind of bowl shaped as well. Yes. I'm sure they did that just for this scene. Yes. <laughs> just yelling at people, just mm-hmm. <gasps> get out of my way, General Racket. <laughs> General <laughs> Racket. Oh. Ah, yes. We're all take orders from General Racket. He's in <laughs> charge. Any gold on the plateau? Mineral resources. Oh, mi- mineral resources. I'll come back to that. I mean, who left that how, did that, how did that thing just jump? It does have spots. Or maybe they're like really, really short stripes. Try some of this. <laughs> Rex, come back. <laughs> Taste the rainbow. Hubbub continues. <laughs> did you find Lord Roxton handsome? No one care that he's technically dead. Hmm. <laughs> Why is a woman just screaming? <laughs> Maybe she got flattened by everyone. <laughs> Probably. But this bit's added in as well. It's not not in the original. I think it's a nice little change. You need, not get through the window. you need a neck he's, he's a he's a big boy. <laughs> 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 oh, you idiot. Don't move that shot. I'll be quiet, Bob. <laughs> Rather <laughs> I assure you! (laughs) I feel like with modern technology in this world, like, eventually it would be discovered, and I wonder if it would be made, like, a World Heritage site. (laughs) Like, years after this. Biological preserve. Who's Pasteur? <laughs> yeah, I've never heard of Pasteur. Uh, I've heard his name, but I don't know what he did. <laughs> I'm looking it up. <laughs> Ooh. Realization. Ooh. Why did he? Oh, okay. Oh, it sounds it, it sounds very obvious now that I look it up. What? Louis Pasteur was a French chemist and microbiologist renowned for his discoveries of the principles of vaccination, microbial fermentation, and pasteurization. Ah, okay. <laughs> that eye is trying way harder than the other. That eye is also trying way harder than the other. I don't believe it. Yeah. Professor Illingworth. <laughs> Why is he acquainted with an Amazonian vulture? I do not take me for some conjurer of cheap tricks.
<laughs> You're fired. <laughs> There's no need for that. <laughs> Who is Lord Breath? <laughs> we don't see him, do we? <laughs> Dippy, yeah. So apparently, Dippy, the Diplodocus skeleton, his tail would have been dragging on the ground. Yeah, the tail should when, be when yeah. this was made. But they, they didn't. They didn't obviously rearrange the entire cast to kind of have. The tail dragging on the ground. I would have been cool if they had like added it in later, but I, I get why they didn't. Yeah. Of course, Agnes wasn't in the novel, so they this fits completely different ending. Yeah. Ever since we fell in that trap. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dead Allosaurus really brings people together. <laughs> I mean, the, the biggest bonding experiences all involved an Allosaurus in some way. <laughs> Allosaurus has never seen such bullshit before. <laughs> <laughs> That would be the fun in this. Good man. He's learning. He can be taught. <laughs> Whoa, I'm getting a lot of static from one of you. I'm a mess. Yeah, sorry. This always upset me. It's like, no, go back to the dinosaurs. Yeah, like, that's significantly <laughs> less interesting. Maybe, they, maybe they'll find, maybe that's where the marine reptiles are. Oh, it could be, yeah. Yeah. Ply saw some Series 5. <laughs> oh, mm -hmm. yeah. oh, no. <laughs> I take it back. <laughs> Have they just been stood there kissing <laughs> that whole time? I think that was happening. I think it was happening at the same time. Yeah, For the sake of their lips. I hope so. I never thought I'd say that, but here I am. I'll be in touch. Nice sort of self in Ubuntu. I wonder where that is. That must be like Dorset or something. Is that the is that the White Cliffs of Dover? Could be. I believe so, yeah. Is that the Allosaurus yeah. skull there? Allosaurus skull. Yeah, yeah cool. Right. Again, that back. 
I survived. He lives! <laughs> Very good. So that was the Lost World BBC edition in 2001. Very good. It was very nice. I think it's a very good adaptation of the book, uh, considering what they've changed. It's a very interesting updating all the dinosaurs to be more accurate. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, they also had the advantage of like a lot of the models they used were already made in like walking with dinosaurs and all the stuff they'd made beforehand yeah so most of the stuff was kind of copied over with only a few changes oh there he is tim haynes yeah i think i think yeah the it was a very interesting thing to remake yeah i think it's very uh interesting that they did that i think that was the um the reason they did that is because they got turned down for Primeval from the BBC, didn't they? Or was that before that? I uh, think that uh, was after, because this is when Haynes and um, Hodges met. Okay. Yeah, that, yeah then, I think then that they was worked, Then they worked on it together to make Primeval. Yeah, because they, um, they went to the BBC, but they were like, no, we want to make Doctor Who. Yes. Yeah. And I imagine so, ITV was like, well, prehistoric park worked. So let's see what what you've got. Yeah. Interesting. So with Roxton having survived in the novel, um, they, they all got rich with some clay diamonds that they'd found and brought back. Um, the, ter- <laughs> the pterodactyl had flown back to South America. And, yeah, more or less the same, except Edward and Roxton planned to go back to the plateau because. (laughs) And then, have you ever heard of the sequel to The Lost World book? I think I've heard of that, yeah. Is it Cruel Eden by Tim Haynes? Um. No, no, no. The the sequel written by uh, Arthur Conan Doyle. Was it just uh, oh, no. The Return to the Lost World? No, they do not return to the Lost World. Oh. <laughs> um, what, what happens is the Earth is floating through a poison gas cloud in space. What? So, <laughs> right? <laughs> okay, then. So Ch- Challenger predicts this and asks all his friends... Summerly, Ruxton, and Edward to come to his house and bring oxygen containers, okay. and then they just they just wait a day, and then everyone else dies, and they're like, "Oh what? my god, what?" I... what? That... Yeah, that sounds like <laughs> that sounds like really bad fan fiction, <laughs> <laughs> and yet it's it's a novel by one of the most esteemed authors of all time. Yeah, because like, he wrote Sherlock Holmes as well, right? Yep, yep, he did. Oh, oh, oh no! <laughs> I think a lot of people forget that he wrote The Lost World as well. Uh, people yeah. who are outside of the paleo media community. So, I, I mean, it's hard to compete with the popu- uh, compete with the popularity of Sherlock Holmes. But yeah, I mean uh, uh, that. You know, I know you shouldn't judge a book by its cover, but the sound of <laughs> the premise alone. Um, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> That's very odd. So A- Atlantis isn't looking that bad now. No. Th- yeah, that was like, sound. Yeah. Because like, an ancient civilization it, uh, went underwater. Okay. Okay. Right, yeah. Um, space poisoned everyone dead, but the four characters. For- what? <laughs> I don't know. Looks like um, uh, Tim Haynes did actually write a follow-up novel to uh, uh, the original. Oh, there it is, the poison. But be- oh, there's Challenger. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, yeah, that'd um, be interesting to read Tim Haynes's novel. Yeah, I, I need to. Cruel Eden. Yeah, that's the one. 
I mean, that that's big big shoes to fill. Yeah, but like, but I mean, I I'm convinced that everything Tim Haynes touches becomes a masterpiece. So <laughs> that again, but like I said, I haven't read it. So, is this the most recent Lost World adaptation? This film, or is there have there been others after this? Uh... I think there's been a few others, but it's one of the most recent. It's arguably the best one. Uh, even... uh, look like look like there was a film in two thousand five. Um, yeah, the the 20, 1925 one's probably the most iconic, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, the black and Obviously. white silent one. Yeah, that's the f- first version. That's the the one with the brontosaurus rampaging through London, isn't it? Yeah, I think that's. Yeah. Yeah. I remember they used footage from that in like the behind the scenes of Walking with Dinosaurs as well. They did, yeah. Which is that's an interesting connection between the two. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I, like, I guess. I, yeah. Oh, sorry. What were you saying? I, I was just saying, I just like I like how Impossible Pictures has kind of covered everything now. So they've done the adaptation of Lost World. They've also done the drama for Primeval, and they've had uh, all the historic factual stuff with the yeah. They've done the trilogy of life. Yep, and they did the speculative stuff like dragons as well. Um, so there's all sorts of stuff they've done, which is good. The only thing they haven't done is a uh, is like a future speculation thing. That's kind of where the future as well comes in, but it's obviously not Impossible Pictures. Yeah. That would be, uh, granted, Impossible Pictures, they've kind of moved on from the dinosaur stuff, unfortunately. Yeah, it's a shame they have. Uh, but although they've done a lot of it, it's just it's uh, been a while since they've done anything. I say that, but th- they do also have the future creatures in Primeval. Yeah. Now that I think about it. But they've never done like a documentary style. That would be very cool to see. Mm-hmm. Well, it'd be interesting then, if they could do um, a sort of walking with style uh, documentary with creatures from Primeval, like the future creatures. That would be very cool. Yeah. Like the Mer time, I would be very interested to see more of the future sharks and all that. Oh, yeah, yeah. And Might uh, help explain the, the ca- plots of Primeval as well a bit. <laughs> and the Camo Beast, and of course the, the future predators, wherever, but they're. But- the biggest not, question mark in the franchise. Not the tree creepers. No, they're not a future creature. Are they not? Nope, they are they are raptors, apparently. Oh are no. raptors. Ugh. <laughs> There's always the Jurassic Beetles as well. Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> So anyway, thanks for joining us. In the- <laughs> yeah, let's see. Yeah, we should probably wrap this up. Yes, good idea. Oh, I hope you all enjoyed us rambling along to this wonderful, wonderful film. Yeah, it was fun. Yep. <laughs> it was. Thanks for having us. Uh, thank yeah. you for joining me. Thank you. And thank <laughs> you all for listening. And uh, I hope you have a merry Christmas and uh, happy holidays. And Bye. the neighbor's dog also agrees with me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye-bye.